uh, the public hearing that we are holding tonight on the petition warrant article. I'm going to read the petition warrant article and then lay out a couple of ground rules. So the warrant article reads, shall we adopt the provisions of RSA 4013 known as SB2 to allow official ballot voting on all issues before the town of Rollinsford on the second Tuesday of March? The petition was checked by our, reg by our uh, town clerk and it had sufficient um, signatories and the petition is available on the website if you'd like to see the petition and the signatories. Uh, with that, I'll lay out some ground rules. If you would like to speak, raise your hand, wait to be uh, uh, recognized called, yeah, by me, by the chair, and I will ask that uh, before a second chance that we have for other people to uh, please state your name and your address. With that, I will ask, is there anything you would like to speak to this petition or an article? Sure. I'm so shy. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to say, this yeah. is very brief. Okay. I'm Bert Crozier. I'm here to speak in support of this. Address, SB. please. Like 70 to South Street. Thank you. I'm here to speak in support of SB2 because anything that, that allows more people to participate in democracy is a good thing. Thank you very much. Good night. Anyone else would like to speak? Um, Joe Dash, 22 River Road. And I, and I guess what I, I'm interested in is, I mean, I, I agree with what he said, but I, I guess I'm trying to understand the other side of the argument. So if there's some place, some arguments that say this is why it's not a good thing, I'd like to understand it because I'm not getting the reason why it's not a good thing. So. Well, me I, I actually, I have done an editorial in the last year about SB2. I've got a written letter to the editor, I've got it written here, and I've got some answers to an interview that I gave as chair last year, so you're happy to pick those up on the way. Okay. The board is divided, I would say. The board is not in total agreement. Uh, I do not support SB2, but I'm happy to tell you why I don't. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a wonderful thing to say that more people are allowed to vote. It's the, the issue is what they're voting on. So the state legislature, these are not our rules, these come from the state. The state legislature, uh, at some point, several several years back, I don't know exactly when, said, okay, said, we're going to give towns an option, another option, other than voting on a Tuesday and your business part of town meeting on Saturday or that night or wherever they have it. We have it on Saturday. So. The, the business part of town, so you've got the voting, which is from 7 to 7, let's say, and the town meeting, which is the legislative body that's folks coming together in town to uh, vote on the warrants that the select board have written and have rec either largely recommended and that the budget committee have also reviewed if they contain appropriations. Mm -hmm. So what SB2 does is it doesn't completely eliminate that town meeting Piece, it moves it to January when the weather is nowhere near as good. There is less attend, it's called a deliberative session. So they move that, they don't call it a town meeting anymore, they call it a deliberative session. They move it to January. These, the average attendance at these deliberative sessions is between two, two and a half percent of the voting population. The average attendance at town meetings is about 10%. The really difficult, this is the part that I have trouble with. The difficulty is that at that deliberative session, that small number of people who show up can amend the Warren article so that what the people vote on on that Tuesday is different from what the board has written and recommended and different from what the uh, budget committee has written and recommended, potentially so. And so you can end up in a really difficult position as a voter where you only have a yes or no on something that was amended by somebody who's not even one of your elected officials because it happened at the deliberative session. Mm -hmm. That's that's the okay. essence for me. And again, I put this up here to pick it up. Thanks. Yes, Kim. Kim Sandler, 14 Virgin Way. Um, <coughs> just for clarification, um, Sandown holds their deliberative session the first week of February. So the timeline for SB2 is about a month before the vote, um, according to the way Sandown wrote their article. Um, the second 
the deliberative session um, gives all the same rights as the town meeting um, in terms of attendance. Um, I've been to the last eight town meetings, and um, it's typically, on average, somewhere between 50 and 125 people. So I disagree um, that attendance is better um, at town meeting than it is at deliberative session. Um, it seems that there has to be hot topics in either case to bring people out to vote. Um, I firmly believe that as long as the public is well informed um, and people do their research, they can get all the information that they need to have to make an informed vote by ballot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach 71 here to try. Um, is it possible to write the warrant articles in a way that acknowledges whether they've been changed at the deliberative session? No, I don't believe so. It's, it's not possible? No, you'll go to the ballot on Tuesday, you'll see a warrant, and you won't know. I know, like, for example, on the school board budget article, let's say, it says what would happen if it wasn't passed. Is there a way to create kind of a, an addendum to the warrant article saying, like, the, you know, say the select board originally proposed a budget of this, however, at delivery session it was changed to this. So still, that people are, are aware, at least. But you still could be, could end up with a vote. That, but you don't like the right. You don't like the yes, you don't like the no. It would just mean, it would eliminate it. There's no SB opportunity to, to change the warrant. It would have to be, it would have to happen via, you know, communications. Okay. All right. Now, just as in the school district, if a budget is not passed by voters, you go back to the default budget, you know, which is, you know, if right. it's complicated, we don't have to go into that, but you, you do end up with a budget. It may not be what anybody wants, but you at least have a budget to work with. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this? Um, David Arklow, 190 Summersworth Road. Um, I guess I, I don't understand what the meeting is for tonight. I thought with the uh, SB2 you voted on it at the at the ballot and they had to have a certain percentage to pass. Is that correct? So is tonight just, okay. just an informative I'll, I'll type that, thing? Or? I'll answer that question, please. So yes, so we are, the board is required to hold a public hearing on certain articles that are here in the warrant. Kino was one. We had a, a public hearing on the Kino article last, Kino warrant article last Monday. SB2, should it appear on the ballot, either from the board, which it did not come from the board, or from the petition warrant article, requires a public hearing. So this is a public hearing so that the public can come out and uh, listen to what people have to say, ask a question, whatever. But there's no vote tonight. But this, this isn't going to determine whether no. it gets on the ballot or not. It's no. going to be on regardless. Okay. This, is, this is on the ballot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Emily, I'm going to check to see if there's anybody other who hasn't spoken yet. Yes, Sonny. Sonny Cross, Rollins Road. Just to let you know, square up right front, I supported this. I signed, actually, the, the petition. Um, the biggest thing is, I have to agree, it's, it's a numbers issue. And I'll give you a prime example. I think what happened last year at town meeting, when we bonded all that stuff, was a horrible thing. I don't think it would have all gone through. Uh, I'm, for one, in the time of my life, where I don't want a lot of debt. So therefore, I don't want to see my taxes going up. Uh, I look at what Dover said, the article in the paper, their tax average has gone up $1,500 a tax bill. I don't want to see that. I presented a thing last year for that fire truck. $2,400 to overhaul that transmission. I didn't see where we had to go out and spend $500 some odd thousand dollars. That, that was my stand. That's the sheer reason. So if I can get 500 people to vote versus 100, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Emily, would you like? I just have another question. Um, before, because I can't remember, um, before the school went to SB2, did all, did this, both the school, which was the delivery session, did that also happen at 
town meeting? I can't remember. Were there always two separate meetings? There were two separate there were. meetings. Okay. They both happened in March, one for the town, one for the school. Got it. And then the voting on Tuesday. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? I'll get back to you, Kim. Anyone else who would like to speak? Kim? Um, so just kind of a, um, a follow-up to um, just first your statement. You know, it's, it's really difficult for some people to get to a 9 o'clock meeting on Saturday and stay for, you know, one to four hours. Um, and, and if that's your only ability to vote on town articles, um, it's, it's very prohibitive. Um, you know, ballot voting gives people 12 hours to walk in, um, cast their vote, and it also gives people the ability to absentee vote. Um, I, I don't understand if you have the same meetings, basically town meeting and a deliberative session, you do the same things at those meetings. You potentially amend the articles. The only difference is going to the polls um, on Tuesday, you know, why does, why is, the board feels, or some of the board, not feel that this is an attractive um, method of voting for this town. Kind of a comment and a question at the same time. Oh, I, 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 it's an opinion, so it requires an opinion. I'm happy to have you read, you know, what I've written if you'd like to read what I've written. Uh, I mean, the, the issue is it's a very small number of people who show up at the deliberative session, so therefore it's a very small number of people who can effectuate writing a warrant article that that is not written by an elected official, may uh, may not be recommended by either select board or the budget committee, and there it is, and the voter can only say yes or no. That's 113, uh, well, this is a follow-up. I put 113 people passed all of the town warrant articles last year at town meeting. 113. That's all it took to pass three and a half million dollars in warrant articles. There were fewer than 50 people at the deliberative at the school deliberative session this year. Most of them were budget committee and officials. I just would like to respond a little uh, to some of the comments that I've heard. Name and address, please. Lorraine Hanson Watson Lane. <coughs> um, my concern, and a little bit, is well, the first concern I have is a deliberative session is held very pretty close to the beginning of the year. The nice thing about the town meeting, by the time we have town meeting, we've already got some more information about the prior year, and it's easier to see what's going on. The other part that I like about town meeting and the timing of it is that, um, for instance, if there's been an audit, we can usually look at the preliminary audit management letter. And that's also helpful, I think, for the townspeople to look at and review at the time that they make their decisions regarding financial matters. I think that's pretty helpful for people. And of course, again, if there's anything new that's cropping up um, after the DRA sets the schedule, which is often later than it's supposed to be, which makes it even more difficult for the, um, I find it probably more difficult for the town staff to prepare things for a deliberative session. It's a lot easier for them if they can get it together. It's already a strain to get it together for the town meeting. I think it's a terrible strain on people to try to do it, to get it together for a deliverance session which is held a month or more earlier. And I think that those are some of the reasons that I would definitely prefer that we stick with the town meeting at this point, because I think it would be more helpful for the staff and a lot more information for the public. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to Angela? Just very name, Angela Matthews, 437 Locust Street. I haven't got a position on this, except that I support continuing with the town meeting form of government, uh, a position statement. Uh, it, it's more an experience that I've had in attending the last few years, the town meeting and deliberative sessions, and I have found the town meeting very civil and an opportunity for complete and full discourse about concerns that we might have about running the town. I, too, I'm retired and I have a fixed income. But I fully support the things that the um, select board has chosen to do and the way in which you've done your work, which is to have a very thoughtful um, uh, capital improvement plan, which is what most of the Warren articles have traditionally been about, capital expenditures. I think they have been reasonable in terms of the impact on the tax base. So um, 
You know, I, I think that uh, having a voice both at the deliberative session and town meeting is a really important opportunity for as many people as possible to gather. It's not going to be 100%, but what I did notice is that there were more pe people at town meetings and a greater representative sample of who lives in the town and what their various opinions are. And I think they have been, for the most part, just very civil and honest dialogues about what's important to us in having a safe and uh, solvent community to live in. So, thank you. thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this? Yes, to just to follow up to your your question, or not your question, but your your uh, opinion on it. I mean, this is in many other towns in New Hampshire do this. Don't they have the same sets of concerns, and have they done anything to resolve, to, to get away from exactly? I understand your point completely, but everybody else must have to deal with the same thing. Well, I think there's still more towns that follow, more towns, especially in our size, that follow town meeting. The legislature has heard complaints from various towns that have become SB2 towns, and it has continually tried to tweak it in order to make to try to deal with some of the issues that towns have come to to understand with SB2. There has been a town here and there that has uh, you know reversed its decision. I think Chester's one of them. So it's it's not it's not universal by any means. I don't know what the exact makeup is, but it's not universal. Okay, thanks. Yes. I wasn't planning on saying anything. My name is Clemicho, 10 Cricket Lane. You know I lived in this town for almost 50 years now. And in the beginning, we used to come to town meeting, and why not? Then work takes over, the kids take over, you can't make everything, and you've got to pay college costs. You've got to put your, your time where it belongs. And most of your young people today, that's what's involved. That's why they don't come to some of these things, they don't have the time to do it. The kids are involved in so much, and they have to earn their living and keep their jobs. So, you know, I think. Town meeting, the way it was, was also a social time when the farm was just a farming community, which is great. I think we've gone beyond that at this point in time. I think now, the way if we stay with the town meeting concept as it is, it limits the voting to just a certain few. It's not the group as a whole. And if we turn around and bring everybody in by just doing this V2, I think everybody has a voice in who's saying what's going on based on what they time they have to do their thing. It's not man the voting day. Everybody votes, just about. So anyone else would like to speak to this? I think just uh, just the difference in the people that show up for the town meeting and the difference of the people that vote at the polls answers the question. I mean, it's, you're definitely going to get more people voting on the issues at the polls than you are at the town meeting. So anyone else would like to speak to this? Only once? All right, Lorraine. No. Just, just one comment on the last thing. I, I'm sure it probably is a lot easier for people to go in and spend five minutes, five minutes at the polls than to do something else. But this is their real chance for democracy, for they can have some real impact on what happens. And I know it takes time, and it's tiresome to have to take time to do it, but it's always wonderful when people do. Thank you. Is there anyone else would like to speak to this? Hey, Sonny Foss, Rollins Road. I appreciate your stand, all right? You say no, I say yes. That's fine. But regardless of which stand you take, you need to be educated in either way you go. If you're going to go to an SB2, like when we go for the school, if you don't go to the meeting, you really don't have a good handle on it. So you're relying on secondhand information, However, if it's a special interest group and wants something, it wouldn't matter if it's a liberative session or a town meeting or a school meeting, the numbers are going to show up. So there again, that's why I took my stand to just share numbers. So I take my odds out of 600 versus 150. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so just a follow-up on the, the timeline. Um, so um, I, I checked the first session is held the first week of February, between February 3rd and February 10th. Um, and I just want to say that the school has been an SB2 school for quite a long time. And they have um, twice the budget and a far more complex process of budgeting. Um, and they make it work. They make it work within the timelines. You do know that the supervisor <coughs> union provides all of the administrative support for the school district. 
and we have no supervisory assistance. Just, just as a oh, okay. Oh, oh. Would you like to speak? I avoid the school. You need to. You need to. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 The school year, the financial school year, ends in June. So they, yes, they can easily, they have, what, six, seven months to provide the information that you're asking for in one month time for the town. The business closed in December here. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak to this warrant article? once? Going twice. Going twice. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for offering your opinions. And we'll see you at the ballot box. Yes. 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 Yes.